Welcome to Coulter Holmes Inside World Pickleball Show, a weekly program featuring the sports lifestyle and action on and off the court of the fastest growing sport in America, pickleball. From beautiful Tampa, Florida. Hello, everybody. I'm Carl Foster at the Simone Jardine Pro Pickleball Association event, the second event this year in 2021 for the Pro Pickleball Association. All the top pros are here, over 40 courts. They've got juniors playing. You've got amateurs in all the divisions. And the top professionals like Ben Johns and Simone Jardine as the top seeds and the ones to be. I'm Melissa McCurley, president of pickleballtournaments.com, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside World Pickleball. Coming up on this week's show, our cover story goes up close and personal with the women's top pickleball player, Simone Jargine, taking another triple gold at her own PPA Pro event in Tampa. You have to win your own tournament. So the, the uh, wise words of uh, Billie Jean King, uh, uh, pressure is a privilege. It's not my saying, it's hers. Uh, but that's something that I live by, and I think, uh, you know, um, it's good. Our player profile highlights the top men's pickleball pro in the world, Ben Johns, taking two more golds in Tampa, one with Simone. Yeah, you've got all the shots out there, but what do you work on the most when you're when you're just drilling? Yeah, so me and my brother exclusively drill. We don't do anything else. Um, we have uh, kind of some what I call mini games where we can compete, but it, it focuses on specific things. So we kind of have a whole routine where we go through a bunch of different things, then we might pick one or two things that we really try to focus on. Recently, I've been focusing on kind of my mid-court reset game. Lee Rosenthal has this week's competitive edge with rising men's pro Zane Navratil. Over COVID, um, the new COVID rules came out and I began experimenting with new ways of generating spin on the serve. And if you start the, the toss with some spin, you'll generate more spin as a result as you hit the ball. And we'll help improve your game with the engaged pickleball tip of the week from national champion Steve Kennedy. So Lee's going to hit some volleys, and if I get a ball that's up a little higher, I'm going to drive it. And if it's down a little bit lower, you're going to see me work on my third shot drop. Ready, Lee? All this as we ramp up for a sold-out APP Tour Delray Beach Pickleball Open event in March. And Pickleball with a Purpose, all coming up on Coulter Holmes Inside World Pickleball Show. This week's show is presented by North Point Bank, relationship-based banking, your number one choice for home loans and high-interest savings. And PGA Village Verano, the award-winning gated community in Port St. Lucie, Florida. At Coulter Homes, the rules are simple. Grab your paddle and always dink in the kitchen. Dink in the kitchen. Remember where you are. Pickle Coulter Homes is the home of pickling. Smash and poach on dedicated courts in resort style and active adult new home communities across the southeast, including PGA Village Verano and Port St. Lucie, home of the World Pickleball Open. Pickle Learn more at coulterpickleball.com. Home financing doesn't have to be puzzling. Whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance, North Point's low competitive rates, client-focused service, and streamlined process make sure you have the right loan for the right home. The Brandt team at North Point Bank works hard to ensure you have the best information to make the best decision to put all the pieces of your financial puzzle together. There's a better way to do financing. Connect with the Brandt team to learn more today. Welcome back to Coulter Holmes Inside World Pickleball Show and our cover story gets up close and personal with the world's top women's pro, Brazilian Simone Jargine, as she hosted and took home the triple gold at the PPA Tour's second stop of 2021 in Tampa, Florida. We had a great first tournament in Arizona last weekend. We packed up the bus, they drove it across the country in two days and we set this entire place up in one day. But we're excited to be here and we're just excited to you know, bring great pickleball to you know, everywhere in the United States. I caught up with Simone after already winning the singles gold and en route to taking the ladies doubles with partner Lucy Kavalova and then continuing her dominance at 41 years young with Ben Johns in the mixed doubles. 
We created the Grand Slam a couple years ago and it's been really successful, but we outgrew the Bonita Springs YMCA because there's only eight courts. So we decided to go combine forces with none other than the PPA. Uh, they are awesome people. Uh, their tournaments are awesome. So we just figure, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go with them and make this event and look at this facility. It's got so many courts. You're the top player, women's player in the world. When you look at the competition coming up and the younger players coming up, so is it a constant battle learning some of the new players' games? And uh, who do you have the toughest time with right now? You know, everybody. Everybody is competition. I have a big target on my back. I've had it. I have had it for many years. Uh, but I think the advantage of being older is that experience and. I see the bigger picture, uh, you know, I, I go out there, I play to win, I, I don't play not to lose, uh, which some of them I sometimes are afraid. What do I, like, I have nothing to protect. I, I put in the work, it's either there what is it, and I let the chips fall where they may, and I, I just feel um, that my training gives me confidence, and therefore when I step on the court, I feel I'm ready. Uh, if I wasn't, then it's on me and nobody else to blame. Talk to many ladies pros and doubles. It's a different game when you're playing ladies doubles versus mixed doubles. How do you adjust that to yourself? Because you're such a great player, and you got Ben Johns, the top male player out there. How do you divide that court up, where you just play, for, you just guys have a chemistry? So the thing about playing with Ben for me that a lot of people ask the same question: like, are you get offended when he comes over? Absolutely not. I like to win. So if that's gonna, the day that it doesn't work, then I'll kick him off and say, listen, I am hitting balls, but. Hello, it's he's good at what he does, but not only that. I, when I, you know, when I made that choice, it had a lot of things that went with it as well. Uh, longevity for me, I can I, I I can play longer. I can play singles because it doesn't take as much out of me covering one tenth of the court. So again, it's it's. I consider myself pretty darn smart. That's what I consider wise myself. Pickleball. Yes, right. well, and older, you get wiser. exactly. <laughs> and and I, you know, he's he's 21. He's super athletic. He can cover so much court. And of course, like you know, we know each other. I've known this kid since he started when he was 17, and and uh, I know what he's thinking. I know where he's going. I oftentimes find myself following him behind, and which is pretty comedic for, for me. I find it funny. A lot of people are like, what is she doing? But I, I just think it's and it's fun. It's fun to play and win. So I don't see anything wrong with that. Next stop to catch the world's top woman pickleball player will be at the upcoming APP Tour stop of the North Point Bank Delray Beach Pickleball Open on the big stadium court. This week's player profile features the men's top pickleball pro in the world, Ben Johns, who came off a triple gold Phoenix performance two weeks ago to win two more golds in Tampa, staying unbeatable in singles and joining Simone for the mixed doubles gold also. You're having a great uh, start to 2021 so far. Yeah, for sure. Just uh, happy to be back with tournaments and stuff. Had a little bit of break since December, and then we played uh, in Arizona last week in the first PPA tournament of the year. Now we're here, a little bit of a change of climate. Went from dry to super humid, but I love it. Now talk about, you know, during the COVID, we've all have all kinds of different expectations, and, you know, it's the athletes. So what do you do during the COVID uh, in the staying in shape, staying in training and so forth? How has it affected your overall game, if it has? 
Yeah, you know, I think the PPA did a great job of still hosting tournaments, you know, with not uh, crowds really, just the, just the players and kind of their safety precautions. So we still had, I think, uh, a total of eight tournaments last year, five of which were PPAs. Uh, and then when tournaments are in the offseason, I'm just lucky just because I have my brother who lives close to me and I can still practice with him, uh, you know, just at kind of local courts. Uh, so COVID, you know, it, it makes a difference. But as long as you're still wanting to practice and you make an effort to, you, you should be able to keep your game at, at least as well as you can. Yeah. yeah, well, you're playing very well, obviously. You haven't lost yet. I saw with Melissa talk to you out there, your goal this year was not to lose a match. <laughs> you know, so you're still on that track. You're into the finals here again. But to play three events, in, you know, I play it myself a little bit, not singles as much, but singles, mixed, and men to play that every tournament what kind of training do you go through yeah well you know it's a lot of stamina for sure uh, you definitely need to pace yourself it's really important to you know stretch afterwards take the right nutrition supplements like I take jigsaw stuff during the tournament magnesium afterwards so that's super important uh, and then just fitness overall you know I mean we practice for this usually a training session for me is about three and a half hours so it's a combination of preparation and uh, doing the right things on the day of and through the weekend how much drilling do you do on, on specific shots? You know, everybody said, I'll oh, just walk out in the court and play, but you know, it's not that easy, right? So yeah, you've got all the shots out there, but what do you work on the most when you're, when you're just drilling? Yeah, so me and my brother exclusively drill. We don't do anything else. Um, we have uh, kind of some, what I call mini games, where we can compete, but it, it focuses on specific things. So we kind of have a whole routine where we go through a bunch of different things, then we might pick one or two things that we really try to focus on. Recently, I've been focusing on kind of my mid-court reset game because uh, I feel like we both feel like that's my weakest part of my game, so that's what I've been working on recently. Right. And when you play men's doubles versus mixed doubles, and I've talked to some of the women on the mixed side, and you know the men seem to dominate in the pro level, where you cover most of the court and more almost like 70, 30 percent of the court. How much do you have to adapt your game? Do you change your game at all when you're playing with Simone versus playing with your brother? Um, so I think it's kind of interesting in pickleball where you know a lot of people think of it as a 50-50 thing. You got your side, you got my side. Uh, I don't really think of it like that. As soon as the serve has been hit, there is no middle line anymore, and I think it's optimal to play with the ad court covering at least 60% and the deuce court covering 40%. It's not that much area to cover, so it's actually optimal to not play 50-50. So uh, my brother actually plays a little less court, but it's for specific reasons. So it's actually not that much of a difference. You definitely are moving more and hitting bigger serves and mixed doubles, but it's uh, my whole game mindset is pretty much the same. Well, you're on top of the mountain right now, so everybody's shooting for you. So when you go into a match, do you have that concept where, you know, nobody has beat me, nobody can beat me, obviously. There's more and more new players coming into the game. Some of the younger players are getting better. You're playing new competition. Is there somebody out there that gives you a tougher time than somebody else? Uh, honestly, I wouldn't say anybody in particular. It's mostly the newer they are, the more trouble I have with them, just because pickleball is a lot about patterns to me and pattern recognition. When you're seeing somebody for the first time or two, it could be tough to read them. Uh, and the more I play them, the more comfortable I feel. So if there's a, a new good player, then that's why I really feel uncomfortable with. Uh, but really, you kind of got to recognize that uh, they're the underdog in the matchup. They're going to be forced to make big plays. So uh, let, let them beat themselves most of the time, apply some pressure, and, and uh, yeah, just have confidence that your shots are going to work. I saw the Arizona match with uh, you and Colin coming back uh, through the losers bracket, coming all the way back, and unbelievable finals match there. That was probably one of the best matches I've seen. But uh, is that is that a match you're going to remember for a while? Yeah, for sure. That was uh, it was a great comeback. Colin really stayed steady, which was great because I was not on top of my game, and he really kind of brought me up, which is uh, it's great to have him on the court with me. Uh, so definitely a memorable match. And Jay and Pat are really great guys, friends too. So I was happy to see them in the final. Good luck the rest of the way here, and I'm, wish, I'm sure we'll see you a lot more. Thank you very much. If you want to catch Ben and all the top pros, he'll also be in Delray Beach March 18th to the 21st on the big stadium. So get your front row box seats now. At Coulter Homes, the rules are simple. Grab your paddle and always dink in the kitchen. Dink in the kitchen! Remember where you are. Pickle Coulter Homes is the home of pickling. Smash and poach on dedicated courts in resort style and active adult new home communities across the southeast, including PGA Village Verano and Port St. Lucie, home of the World Pickleball Open. Pickle Learn more at CoulterPickleball.com. Home financing doesn't have to be puzzling. Whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance, North Point's low competitive rates, client-focused service, and streamlined process make sure you have the right loan for the right home. The Brandt team at North Point Bank works hard to ensure you have the best information to make the best decision to put all the pieces of your financial puzzle together. There's a better way to do financing. Connect with the Brandt team to learn more today.
This is Lee Rosenthal here with the Competitive Edge Inside World Pickleball in beautiful Tampa, Florida. I'm here with professional pickleball player Zane Navertil. Thank you for being here with us today. And my first question for you, everybody's talking about your serve, this deep topspin serve. You developed it, I think, in the past year over COVID. Tell us about that. It's, it's a weapon. I have no idea what you're talking about, Lee. Um, so yes, uh, over COVID, um, the new COVID rules came out and I began experimenting with new ways of generating spin on the serve. And if you start the, the toss with some spin, you'll generate more spin as a result as you hit the ball. So um, I started tossing the ball off the paddle. However, the PPA is not implementing the new 2021 uh, USA Pickleball rules. Um, so it's not, uh, not capable of doing it here but I still think my serve's all right. So I practice it a lot. It's the toss. I've hit myself in the face with my toss before, so it's not easy by any means, but it does give you a uh, competitive edge, so. It, it sure does, and what do you see as far as the reaction from your opponent? Again, you're pushing them back, a lot of spin deep. How, what's their reaction? How's that helping you? Well, in singles especially, it, uh, it helps generate shorter returns and if I have a shorter return, I can generate better angles hitting my third shot. Basically, it equates to an easier time passing your opponent. Okay. And I noticed you hit some amazing passing shots. You're very quick around the court. That's definitely your competitive edge. Talk to us a little bit about tactics as you're uh, building the point. Sure. Well, usually I try to go more based on instincts than anything else because I, I find that if I'm really thinking out there, I, I tense up a little bit. I know the shots that I'm capable of hitting through hours and hours of drilling. And for me, the way that I play, I think my game is mostly just based on execution. I think if I'm executing my shots correctly, I, I think I can take tactics out of it actually a little bit. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And as I'm chatting with pros, I find they're drilling a lot. Oh, yeah. where, where the amateurs jump out there and we play. You're drilling a lot? What are of, you working on? Yeah, of course. I mean, I hit a ton of ground strokes with my buddy John Sincola from back home. Uh, I live in the Milwaukee area and he lives in uh, the Chicago suburbs, so it's a little bit of a hike for me. But yeah, we really isolate the singles game, a lot of ground strokes, a lot of kitchen play, and I, I tend to think that an hour of drilling is probably worth three hours at least of, of playing. So it's time efficient as well. Wonderful. And it sounds to me like that's what you're recommending to the amateurs out there. What's your advice for the average pickleball player who's 50 years of age and a 4-0 approximately to, to take their game to the next level? Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, figuring out playing tournaments is a phenomenal way to figure out what you're kind of weak at. Because the first thing I'm doing and when I play against somebody is I'm going to figure out what they're bad at and try and hit every shot there, right? And most people are going to follow the same strategy. So tournament play can really show you what your weaknesses might be, what you need to improve. Having an open mind about what you need to improve and drilling that is phenomenal. That's, how, that's the only way you can truly get better, I think. So. Thank you. To maintain your level of fitness, are you doing off-court training as well? What are the type, some of the types of things that you do? Um, physical fitness, nutrition, et cetera. Well, Lee, can't you tell I do CrossFit? I mean, <laughs> look at this. Look yeah. at that. So, you and me both. <laughs> so uh, I actually, I do a lot of, well, you might be able to tell this part, but I do a lot of running, a lot of agility work, agility ladders, um, jumping rope. Um, and I actually do, believe it or not, do CrossFit, but I'm still waiting to put on a couple pounds of muscle. Um, so yeah, having quick feet and explosive movements is, is huge, not only in singles, but in doubles as well, right? There's a ton of times up at the kitchen line where you're scrambling and being, able, being strong enough for your lower body and core to be able to maintain balance is huge. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a super strong guy by any means, but my legs and my core are pretty good. Uh, I don't think I don't bench press you, but uh, I think I can cover the- you might. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we won't figure it out on here. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Lucky me. <laughs> Maybe an arm wrestle. <laughs> Deal. What are your plans for the next year um, with pickleball? And, and what do you see for the future of our wonderful game? Yeah, so this upcoming summer, I'm going to be doing a Wisconsin teaching tour. Super excited for that. That's how I am able to pursue pickleball full time is through teaching. And I 
I really enjoy it. Um, and so for the future of pickleball, I'm just going to try and uh, keep my way, keep myself at the top of the game for as, as long as I can because I know there are, there are new entrants coming in daily and phenomenal players. I'm going to do whatever I can to defend them off for the time being. So hopefully I have a long, uh, long um, future in this sport. I can't see myself quitting and going back to auditing anytime soon. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So. Well, we appreciate you being in this sport. You're a pleasure to watch. You're a great competitor. I love seeing you fly around the court. And may you have continued success. And thank you for being with us today. This is Lee Rosenthal for Inside World Pickleball, the competitive edge with professional pickleball player and champion, Zane Navratil. Thank you, Lee. It's time for the Engage Pickleball Tip of the Week with Senior Championship Pro, Steve Kennedy. Listen, we're gonna talk a little bit about when do you drop and when do you drive, okay? And we're talking about the third shot drop or third shot drive. I tell most of my students, it's an easy decision. If you get a ball that is bouncing pocket high or higher, nine times out of 10, you are going to drive that ball. Right. The other time when you can almost guarantee yourself a drive is when your feet get beyond the baseline and you're back in here. It's just too much distance to be working with a third shot drop and it's not nearly going to give you enough time to get in. So if the ball is pocket level or higher, you're going to drive it. Now when I say drive, I don't mean that you get to knock the coloring off the ball. I mean that you get to hit the ball with some authority and a little bit of pace. Always find that at, at, when you decide how hard you want to hit it. Find a pace that you feel comfortable with that you could repeat it time after time after time. So you're gonna come off your 100% and get into that 50, 60% of your speed capability, right? So not too hard. So I wanna to demonstrate to you guys a little bit about when we should drop and when we should drive. So Lee's gonna hit some volleys and if I get a ball that's up a little higher, I'm gonna drive it. And if it's down a little bit lower, you're gonna see me work on my third shot drop. Ready, Lee? Good. And as you see there, guys, it's tempting to want to hit them all, but there's going to be a lot of shots in there that got down too low. And if I get way down in here and I drive this ball, that ball's trajectory will be moving up. And the smarter player is going to recognize that if you drive a low ball and you're driving it up, it's going to go out. So hence is why we want to go into the third shot drop and neutralize our opponent on that shot. Really work diligently on your third shot drop. It's a very important shot. When to use them? Again, we talked about that, so pick the right time for the drive versus the drop, vice versa. I want to give you all just one more other suggestion, is we very rarely put two drives together. If you're not in behind a drop or a drive, you've probably made a mistake. All right, so work on your drops and drives, and let's see if we can improve that stroke. And that's this week's edition of Inside World Pickleball from beautiful Tampa, Florida at the second stop on the Pro Pickleball Association, the Simone Jargine event with Ben Johns and all your top professionals, amateurs, and juniors here playing in just a great weekend of pickleball. For my partner, Melissa McCurley, I'm Carl Foster. Carpe Dinkum. This week's show is presented by North Point Bank, relationship-based banking, your number one choice for home loans and high-interest savings, and PGA Village Verano, the award-winning gated community in Port St. Lucie, Florida.